Okay, so obviously today is a big day for people that have invested in the L-Mount or Lumix S-Series cameras as there has been a big announcement, well, a few big announcements, and of course that is the S5 II, the S5 IIx, and a new lens as well. And in today's video, or this video specifically, I wanna go more into the S5 IIx and what we can expect to see when that camera gets released in May of this year. I've already made a full hands-on first look video of the S5 II, and I definitely recommend that you guys go out and watch that video as well as this one, because a lot of the core features between the S5 II and the S5 IIx, or the upgrades of those two cameras, are the same throughout, so there's gonna be a lot over there that has crossover with the S5 IIx, so definitely check that one out as well. But in this video, what I'm gonna be talking about is the main differences between the S5 IIx compared to the S5 II. For those who may be interested in that camera and may want to hold out until May, until they upgrade. Of course, the biggest news of today is the fact that Lumix are now moving away from the Contrast Detect AF system and going to a Phase Hybrid Detect system, which I'm sure a lot of people are gonna be very happy about because now, arguably, the biggest problem with Lumix cameras is truly fixed. And I know that because I've been testing the S5 II extensively, and I'm telling you now, it is absolutely faultless. It is so good. If you just shoot stills, then there's really no reason to consider the S5 IIx over the S5 II as they share the exact same specs for photo. The only reason to get it in this use case would be purely aesthetic. So before we get onto the added features that we'll see in the S5 IIx in May, let me just quickly break down the pricing between these two cameras. The S5 IIx will retail for around £2,299 or $2,199, making it around two to £300 or dollars more than the S5 II that are retail for around £2,000 or dollars. Personally, I think this is a very modest price difference for the added features you'll get with the S5 IIx. And as always, Lumix have done a great job of delivering both value and function without pricing out a large fraction of consumers. Okay, so let's get onto the added benefits for video shooters that we'll see in the S5 IIx over the S5 II. Of course, the S5 IIx will have the new Phase Hybrid Detect AF system that I've tested extensively with the S5 II, and it is honestly nothing short of incredible. Again, you can see all that sort of stuff in the S5 II first look video here. The biggest difference between the two is the recording options for video shooters. With the S5 IIx, you will have all intra codecs for cinema 4K, 4K, 3.3K, and full HD, whereas the S5 II only features a long op codec internally with a max bit rate of 200 megabits a second. However, the S5 IIx will let you shoot in bit rates up to 600 megabits a second internally in cinema 4K, 4K, and 3.3K using the all intra codecs. You'll need to use the fastest UHS-2 card you can find to access these data rates low, and of course, you're gonna need a lot more storage compared to shooting in the long op codex. And if 600 megabits a second isn't enough for you, then you can also shoot video at a data rate of 800 megabits a second when recording to an SSD via USB-C. So yes, that means that we'll get USB-C SSD support with this camera, which of course is another huge plus for the video guys and the overall video workflow. The S5 IIx will also be able to record ProRes up to 5.8K to an SSD drive and also record ProRes in Full HD internally. So if you are still working with 1080p deliverables and often pass footage around between multiple editors, then this internal ProRes codec may be something to look out for. And while we're on the topic of ProRes and external recording, the S5 IIx will be able to output RAW via HDMI just like the S5, the S1H, and the S1 with the upgrade key. So for those who enjoy using either Blackmagic RAW or ProRes RAW, you will be all set with this camera. Like I said in my S5 II first look video, you will not get RAW via HDMI out of the box with that camera and will have to purchase an upgrade key to access the RAW features. So if this is something you'll genuinely use a lot, then the S5 IIx is the better choice. As you've already been able to see as well, the S5 IIx will be all black with the only splash of color remaining on the top record button. Aesthetics obviously don't affect the image quality of course, but I personally absolutely love the look of this design and I'm sure a lot of you guys will as well. You should definitely check out my hands-on first look of the S5 II as this video goes more into depth about the big upgrades that these cameras share over the previous generation of S-series cameras. As soon as the S5 IIx is released, I'll be making a ton of hands-on videos with that camera, including image quality comparisons between the higher bitrate all intra codex and the long op codex, plus general comparisons with the S5 II and the S5. So if that sounds interesting to you, then you should definitely subscribe if you haven't already done so, and also check out all of my other videos on the Lumix S3's on upper cameras, and hopefully I shall see you in the next one.